The Death Eaters have invaded Hogwarts again. It's time for a very Potter Halloween. Hey y'all, it's Molly with Mammoth Club and I'm at Universal Orlando today because it's officially the Halloween season in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. That's right, the Death Eaters are back at Hogwarts. The Dark Arts Projection Show is back on the castle. We're going to go to both sides of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and do as many spooky, fun, Halloween-y activities as we can. There's going to be snacks, there's going to be magic, there's going to be tips and tricks. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. There's just one thing I'm missing. That's better. Osseo video. We are starting our spooky fun in Diagon Alley. This is the section of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter that's in Universal Studios Florida. And while there's not anything officially Halloween here like there is over in Hogsmeade, there's a bunch of spooky scary fun that we can have before we head that way. In fact, there's only one place to start for spooky fun. And that's Nocturne Alley. This is where, you know, the seedier witches and wizards, your Slytherins, your Death Eaters, your you-know-who supporters might hang out in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And this area is so cool. It's my favorite part in the entire lands, plural. It's so amazing. The detail's incredible. And a lot of people don't even realize this is back here, that you can walk into this spooky, scary spot. Inside Nocturne Alley, you'll even find a little wand magic. That's right, some of the interactive wands do have spells here inside Nocturne Alley. And for this video, for a video all about Halloween, there's no better wand for me to use than Lord Voldemort's. I fear the power that this gives me. But fun fact about Lord Voldemort's wand is that it's made out of yew. That is the wood that was used. Yew trees are incredibly toxic to humans, and their nickname is either the Tree of Death or the Death Eater because they are fatal to human beings. They're also a tree that is often solitary and lonely, much like Lord Voldemort or Tom Riddle. He didn't really ever have any friends. There are also trees that live incredibly long lives, which you probably know is what Voldemort's whole deal was, was he didn't want to die. Lastly, they are often found in graveyards, including the graveyard in Little Hangleton, where Voldemort was resurrected. So there's a lot of symbolism behind this creepy wand. Let's go use it. Use it. Get it? <laughs> I just love it back here. It's so creepy scary. There's so much detail that people don't often notice. But let's do a little magic first, including one of my favorite spells of all. I love the Aloha Mora, which is the unlock spell back here because uh, someone's eye is going to look at you and then make sure you grab for the door handle as well. And there's also Incendio at the bird. There's Locomotor Chimney Sweep. There's some really fun spells back here, but what is also really cool, the Nocturne Alley portion of your map that comes with your interactive wand actually lights up and glows in the dark. You'll see the numbers and the spots on the map are glowing under the black light. I feel like people miss a lot of the really cool detail in this area too. Like, just the way it looks spooky scary. It feels like it's nighttime and dark in here. The forced perspective to make it look like that goes long, long ways away. Amazing. Things like the interactive posters. We've got Fenrir Greyback's wanted poster here. Around the corner, you'll see Bellatrix's wanted poster. I just think oh, it's just the coolest. It is just amazing. Oh, and they're playing the Jaws song. I talked about that in the Harry Potter Secrets video I did, which you should go check out after this one. Um, but there are a bunch of nods to Jaws because this land is where Jaws the Ride used to be. And one of them is that the shrunken heads sing, show me the way to go home, which the trio famously sing aboard the orca and Jaws. So that's just serendipitous that we got to hear that. And I love it. About to go into my favorite shop in any theme park ever in the whole world, Borgen and Burks. But before we do, here's another great Easter egg. Look down below. You'll see that every now and again a green light flashes. That's because there's some spell practice going on. And while it's not the only spell that has a green light in the Harry Potter universe, the most famous one is Avada Kedavra. So I'm going to assume they're up to no good down there, maybe practicing the killing curse. Not kind. Also, can you guys be quiet? Mimble Wimble. Thank you. As I was saying, Avada Kedavra is the killing curse because it is supposed to be a play on Abracadabra, and it was thought that it would be kind of funny if 
muggles have been saying abracadabra and all of our little silly magic shows for the for all time basically and magicians are pulling rabbits out of hat and saying abracadabra but we actually are just misinterpreting the most evil curse of all okay now to the shop i pointed out a bunch of the easter eggs in this store last time but that doesn't mean we can't look at them again and point out even more things like the hand of glory that malfoy ends up buying because it lights his way and the curse necklace that he gives to katie bell this is also where you can buy a lot of collectibles like if you'd like to buy a death eater mask for 110 if you some reason want to buy the knife that kills dobby you monster it's 85 dollars oh that's interesting minimum age to purchase 18. yeeks i believe this is fairly new as well this lovely death eater necklace a steal at 25 and i actually really like this deathly hallows necklace for 33. i don't need more harry potter things but do i need this 25 for the dark mark ring hmm now this is something this is new this is a a very snazzy Death Eater mask. Hold on, I'm gonna try it on because it is something. Uh, yeah. I don't know if my hair's gonna fit in it. Would you be scared of me? Why did they have to make him a like missing tooth Death Eater? Why can't I have all my teeth? I think if I was a Death Eater, I would have all my teeth. <laughs> Yeah, this is not comfortable. Ooh, I also really like this Dark Mark mug with the snake skin, but y'all know I don't need another coffee mug. There's also a new-ish Dark Mark t-shirt and sweatshirt. We gotta get out of here before I spend all my galleons. I talk about the rest of the Easter eggs in here in the last video, but I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that you can buy wands in here. So if Olive Anders has a long line, uh, you can buy certain wands here in... Morgan and Burks. Now, only the evil ones. You can't buy, like, Harry's wand, but you can buy Voldemort's wand. I actually bought my Voldemort wand right here. Uh, you can buy the Death Eater ones, Sirius Black, who, as we know, does not turn out to be evil, um, Snape, same thing, the Malfoys, etc. Here's one more Easter egg for the road. I love the educational decrees back here, and they've actually changed some out because they used to have different ones. But these are, of course, from Order of the Phoenix when Umbridge is in charge. So all students will submit questioning about suspected illicit activities. Quidditch matches are canceled. Literature by non-wizards or half-breeds is banned. Yikes. Back out in the daylight, but not for long because we're going to go back behind this creepy alley to see another Easter egg and one of my dear friends being a Slytherin and all. There you are, buddy. Did you know he's back here? This beautiful snake is sitting back at the side of Magical Banana. Yeah. I know, I'm telling them that you're here. Yeah, how have you been? Great. And he speaks parcel tongue. So you might not have been able to understand him, but I could, and what he said was, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell for Mammoth Club. It's really nice of you to support the business. And speaking of Magical Menagerie, I like to pop in and see what creatures are available to adopt from time to time. Especially, we'll point out a few dark arts creatures, should you prefer to adopt those. You could adopt the Grim, a dragon if you consider that evil. Fluffy if you consider that evil. It's a puppet. Mrs. Norris, who I assume we can all agree maybe she's not evil, but she's definitely not kind. Nagini, a different dragon. And of course, the most evil of them all, stupid scabbers. Even has a missing toe. Phew, all of this dark magic has worked up an appetite, so I'm going to go and get a snack at Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor like any good dark wizard would. But I'm going to ask the uh, witcher wizard in here what they think Voldemort would eat. Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor is the shop in Diagon Alley. Harry Potter visits it quite regularly throughout the stories, especially in Prisoner of Azkaban when he gets to stay in Diagon Alley for a few weeks before school starts, and Florian Fortescue helps him do his homework and gives him free peanut butter strawberry sundae. So that's actually my favorite flavor, but again, I'm going to ask the Witcher Wizard to pick. 
This is some of my favorite ice cream in the world. It's not only incredibly delicious ice cream, but I love that they have such unique flavors. There's a variety of soft serve, including butterbeer flavor. They've got Granny Smith apple, orange marmalade, toffee apple. Then they also have hard pack ice cream that includes flavors like chocolate chili, clotted cream, Earl Grey, and lavender sticky toffee pudding. Again, my favorite strawberry peanut butter. Yum, yum, yum. It's seriously such delicious ice cream but I don't know what flavor I'm gonna get. It's up to them to say what, what Voldemort would eat. The witches in there said that Voldemort would either get clotted cream, which is sour cream cheesecake, or chocolate chili. And I thought, yeah, chocolate chili. So I got chocolate chili, but I couldn't resist because you can get two flavors in your cone. I had to get my favorite strawberry peanut butter as well because I like to pour one out for Florian Fortescue who the Death Eaters murder. So. All right, on with the show. We are taking our ice cream to go because I have just a few minutes to get on the Hogwarts Express to head over to Hogsmeade. But I'm telling y'all, this ice cream is so good. It's so creamy. The strawberry peanut butter is my all-time favorite flavor with the soft serve butter beer as a close second. Mm. If you like peanut butter and jelly, if you like the peanut butter and jelly milkshake over at 50s at Studios, oh, it's so good. It sounds weird, but if you're a peanut butter fan, Mwah, phenomenal. The Hogwarts Express is an attraction and a method of transportation. It's a two for one. It takes you between the two Wizarding World lands, but you need to have a park to park ticket since you're going into the other park. It's incredibly popular. It has a very long line. Highly recommend using Express Pass if you have that from either purchasing it or your annual pass or staying at one of the Universal Premier Resorts. But it's very fitting for our story today as we do get a visit from f some spooky, scary creatures on our way to Hogwarts. <laughs> Change of plans. I was not the only person with the idea of jumping on the Hogwarts Express right as this park closed since that one stays open and had a 75 minute wait and a 45 minute wait in Express, they told me. I don't have 45 minutes, I wanna see the Death Eaters. So we're walking, which is less magical, but faster. So see you in a second. And just like that, we're in Hogsmeade. Now, a few things have happened since I last saw you. One, I ate my ice cream cone. Chocolate chili, very delicious. Not super spicy as someone who loves heat, but it is definitely spicy. You can definitely taste the chili. So I wouldn't get it if you're really heated first. Sorry, the spooky music has me looking for Death Eaters. Number two, started spitting a little bit. I hope that doesn't impact the Death Eaters' desire to come out and mingle with the folks. But let's, let's go mingle, wait. I'm not ready to duel a Death Eater. Where's my Dark Mark? Hold on. Most more. Done. Got my Dark Mark tattoo. That way the Death Eaters want to talk to me. Also, I'm very aware that Morse Mord is the spell that puts the Dark Mark in the sky. But through all my Harry Potter research, I don't know if there's a spell that puts it on your arm or activates it on your arm, because when you see it, they just touch it. They don't actually like do a spell. And I just thought it would be more theatrical if I said more Morse So don't come at me in the comments, fellow Potter nerds. I know. Let's go find some Death Eaters. Oh, and P.S. I bought a 10 pack of these off Amazon for like $8. Sometimes they do sell them here, but they tend to sell out very quickly. But if you're prepared, you can get a pack for $8. I'll link them in my Amazon shop. And it's very fun because the Death Eaters really like interacting with you if you have one. And let me be clear, your girl is a strong Slytherin, but she's definitely not a Death Eater. In fact, I put the tattoo on upside down so I could distinguish myself. I don't know if that'll work or not. I just want the Death Eaters to interact with me in a fun way. But I'm like definitely a Slytherin, cunning, ambitious, looking out for number one. But I'm not a like casually use the term mudblood kind of person. You know what I mean? But like I said, if you have one of these, the Death Eaters really like to interact with you. So it's a fun thing, especially if you've got kids. So the Death Eaters come out about every 20-ish minutes. It's not scheduled. It starts around dusk time, um, as long as the weather is okay and there's no lightning in the area. They come out for a few minutes and they will like roam the entire area. And if you have your wand, you can challenge them to a duel. You can take pictures with them. It's just a really cool interactive experience. There's also a projection show on the castle we're gonna see. I'm very excited. A little scared, because they're kind of intimidating, but mostly excited. 
the way this works is that the Death Eaters come out from next to the three broomsticks. Again, about every 20, 25-ish minutes, it's an unscheduled thing, but they do start here on the little stage, uh, and then they kind of swarm the entire area for 10 or so minutes, and then they head back in, and they'll do that several times throughout the night, starting around dusk. Update. There is still lightning in the area, so I talked to a few team members who said as of right now, the Death Eaters will not be coming out because of the weather. So I've decided to go ahead and get in line to see the next show. The projection show is called Dark Arts at Hogwarts. It's a projection on the Hogwarts castle. It happens several times a night, about every 15 or 20 minutes, depending on when the park closes determines how many shows there are. They usually start around dusk, which right now is around eight o'clock. Um, but as the dusk falls earlier, they'll do more shows. Tonight, they're only doing two shows. I asked a team member. They did one starting uh, a few minutes before eight, and now I'm in the holding area for the second show. So you'll want to speak to the team members to figure out what time to see it because on Universal's website, it just says dust. My hope is that I can see the show and then by the time the show's over, uh, the lightning in the area has passed and the Death Eaters are able to come out. If not, I will come back another day to see some Death Eaters. Ooh, there's the pyro from the show. Very exciting. And I will duel another night. This is definitely a patient pants situation, uh, but once you get up towards the castle, there's a lot more room than where they're kind of holding you in the middle of Hogsmeade. So just go slow, be patient, hang on to your friends and family. And there's the castle. Ooh, I love this show. So basically this show is a short, like, eight or so minute projection show on the castle. There's versions of it throughout the year. There's a normal one that happens pretty much all the time. There's a Christmas version. And then of course, this is the dark arts version for Halloween. So it includes a little more slither. It includes the dark marks and spooky, scary creatures like the Acromantula and the Dementors. And I love it. I knew then this was a different kind of magic. Very dark. Very powerful. But until tonight, I had no idea just how powerful. zeitgeist because it's in the movie and I just don't understand Dumbledore says so many brilliant things in the books why they had to make up something silly and put it in the movies so that quote irks me as a diehard book fan but but right after Dumbledore says that and I roll my eyes my eyeballs fill with tears tears because prongs comes out and saves the day against the Dementors and it's beautiful and wonderful and magical and I love the night show definitely see it. Now, if you're not a big Harry Potter fan, I don't think you need to wait around for it. It's it's only like eight minutes long. There's a little bit of pyro, but it's mostly the projections and the music, and the, it's, it's awesome if you're a Harry Potter fan. I think that is safe to say for all of this. But 
when I was walking back, it looks out the Death Eaters came out uh, while I was watching the show for one time only, and they stayed out pretty long, I assume, because that was the only time they came out tonight. And it's super, super fun to interact with the Death Eaters. They kind of meander throughout. There are a few, they will do magic throughout. If you watch them, they'll make things uh, catch on fire, and they'll make the lights go out and things like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and then they will duel with you. So if you want to duel with the Death Eater, just walk up to one holding your wand. They may check and see if you have the dark mark. And if you don't, they will duel you. They never really want to duel me tonight because I obviously have the dark mark. Well done. Um, but one of the Death Eaters did see right through my plan of putting it on upside down and she knew I was a fake. Oh, oh you could tell that I'm not really a Death Eater? Yeah, I know. I, I was faking it. I think the Death Eaters are such a fun thing. I look forward to seeing them more nights throughout the Halloween season. I just think it's such a cool experience. It's such an interactive experience. It's spooky, it's scary. It's like such an immersive Harry Potter thing. Ultimately, I think Universal Orlando does an incredible job with Halloween, not only with their premiere event, Halloween Horror Nights, which I did a whole video of. Uh, you can go check it out. I went into the houses. I was able to film in the houses as media, so go check that out as well for more spooky fun. But I think Harry Potter Halloween is so, so incredible. Now, before we wrap up, though, we would be remiss to do a whole Halloween video and not take a moment of silence for James and Lily Potter, Harry's parents, who were in fact murdered on Halloween, so. Yeah. Gone too soon. Poor Harry had to grow up as an orphan, look at his mean aunt and uncle and cousin. Never knew the meaning of love, never knew what it was like to be hugged by mom until Molly Weasley did it and got on a fire. Uh, this video was so fun until this moment. Anyway, Harry Potter Halloween, one of my favorite things of the year. I can't wait to come back for night. Used my time turner and now I'm here a few days after I originally filmed. No dark mark tonight, so I will duel a few more Death Eaters, but I did still bring a Death Eaters wand. This is Narcissa Malfoy's. It's just an awesome looking wand, so I bought it. Now, let's go find some Death Eaters and maybe treat ourselves to a snack. Yeah! Woo! I broke the dueling rules. That's very Slytherin of me, I guess. And wrapping up this perfect night dueling the Death Eaters with a lovely fall treat, a hot butter beer. Yes, it's still like 85 out, but you know what? I'm pretending it's fall. I'm manifesting it. Mammifesting it. Hot butter beer is so good. All of my thoughts about drinking sweet beverages go right out the window. It is so sweet. It's like drinking a warm cupcake. I love it. Oh, it's fabulous. It's now available year round, but I feel like hot butter beer is just quintessential fall. Also, the keen observers might realize that this dark mark is the edible dark mark on Fred and George Weasley's Weasley Wizard Reasus because I am not in Hogsmeade anymore. I am a Diagon Alley. Why, you may ask, when I was in Hogsmeade? Well, I kind of forgot that the park closes at 8, but the Death Eaters stay out past 8, so by the time I was done dueling and ready for a refreshing beverage, all the food and beverage locations were closed. So, I came over using my Frigo Fear Pass to Halloween Horror Nights to get myself a hot butter beer. So, learn from my mistakes, and if you want a treat, 
during your Hogsmeade visit. Make sure you get it before the park officially closes, even though the light show and potentially the Death Eaters stick around after. Okay, let's use the time turner and go back in time once again. We've got more Halloween videos coming for you. Make sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss them. Follow us on social. In the meantime, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been spooky and magical. Bye.